you so much. You know having a good night so far? Who's ready to see Pablo Francisco? All right, well, hold on, because I'm going to do some time. My name is Peyton McCann. I'm from Wasilla, Alaska. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am the oldest of three to a single mom. Uh, my dad left when I was two, and I should probably take that off my Tinder bio. <laughs> but uh, I'm the oldest of three, and uh, I was always the favorite kid growing up, uh, until last year. And that, I'm not the favorite anymore for two reasons. Number one, because I've continued to do stand-up comedy. And number two, because uh, my little sister last year won the Miss Teen Alaska pageant. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people probably go from being the favorite sibling to not being so. But not everybody gets to watch it happen with a literal placing of a crown on the head of the sister. And I look over and I see tears of joy streaming down my mom's face and I think, I don't think I'm gonna hear from her for a while. <laughs> I uh, actually moved to New York three years ago to pursue my dream of being a stand-up comedian. And as you can tell from my presence here, it went great. <laughs> it's cool being from Alaska in a city like New York, because uh, it's so unique, you know? But you get asked a lot of dumb questions because of that. People would always ask me, where do you like living more, Alaska or New York? I think that's a dumb question. Where, what do you like more? Great Italian food or pneumonia? <laughs> What, what's your ideal night out? Would you maybe like to go to a new trendy bar and then see your favorite band at a historic venue? Or do you more like huffing glue and wondering when you'll see the sun again? Like, we're in New York City, right? The greatest city in the world. You're never more than a block or two away from a great dollar slice of pizza or a cool dive bar. You know, you could call Chinese food any time, day or night. It'll be at your door in 20 minutes. That's a beautiful thing. Because in Anchorage, Alaska, the biggest city in our state, I tell them, we still have about six people a year taken by wolves. And that's not a 2019 problem. I don't know. Um, I love watching Netflix, uh, but I, I'm worried because I think it makes me such a procrastinator. You know, I'm always putting off things that I really have to get done just to watch some dumb show. You know, I'll tell myself, okay, you can watch one more episode of Big Mouth, and then that's it. You have got to finish the Ted Bundy tapes. <laughs> Are you all Are you all drinking tonight? Are you guys drinking? Right on, right on. I love drinking. Uh, my favorite part of drinking is thinking about all the people I've let down. I was talking to a bartender at Sullivan's the other day. This is true. He told me, if, he said, if I buy a good bottle of whiskey, it'll last me three to four months. I said, three to four months? If I buy a bottle of whiskey, it'll last me three to four thirty. I just hate it when people are like, I don't need to drink to have a good time. It's like, yeah, I don't need to drink to have a good time either. It's just to stop the shaking. <laughs> My last job in New York was as a waiter. Uh, I had to wear a purple hat all day, and uh, wearing a hat as part of your work uniform is a good way of saying, not everything's gone according to plan. <laughs> I was in like a really fast paced, tight quarters restaurant. One time there was a single dad there with two shitty kids. And uh, he kept having to pick his daughters like rolling off the floor and they were throwing stuff and I could just see him getting more and more mad and like red and sweating as the meal went on. And at one point I passed by him and he, I heard him yell, stop licking chairs. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I am not ready to be a dad. Sorry, I sound just like my dad. <laughs> Wasn't my worst uh, job, though. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, uh, I was a commercial fisherman here in Alaska for a while, and uh, that was a nightmare. Yeah. I had dragged for Pollock out of Kodiak. Uh, I was on a three-man crew. 
I don't know if you are familiar with nautical terms, but on a three-man crew, you've got the captain, the first mate, and then me. Uh, I had never worked on a boat before, so if it's your first time commercial fishing, they call you faggot. <laughs> that was not discussed in the interview. They waited until we were at sea. Until that became my official title. No, I don't know. I uh, have a new job now. I work in the weed industry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's also a difficult job, but in the opposite way. Uh, it's the pace is something else. I'll give you an example. Uh, I was calling a dispensary trying to talk to an owner to get some of our products onto their shelves. And so I called this place, and the guy answered his, it was a bud tender, and he goes, uh, Hey, this is Brian. He's like, uh, hey Brian, it's Peyton. I'm hoping to speak to the owner there. Maybe you could get some of our product on your shelves. Is Dave available? He's like, oh, no, this is Brian. <laughs> yes, thank you, Brian. Uh, could I speak to Dave, please? Is he available? <laughs> Dave! Dave! Uh... Dave can't hear me right now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Brian. I will uh, try again later. My little brother loves to fish, and he told me uh, he doesn't care. He said, I don't care what I do for a living as long as I have time to fish. I thought that's a weird way to pick a career. Right? Could you imagine being in an interview and saying, now before I accept, will I have time to kill small animals as a hobby? <laughs> Well, then find yourself another pediatrician. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I hope you're having a good time. My name's Peyton McCann. Thank you for coming. Give it up to the next person. Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian's name is Ben Farley. He is a good friend of mine, and together we are going to be doing a radio show, a weed comedy radio show starting in two weeks. So ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for my friend Ben Farley. He's not wrong. I don't know if you can tell right away, but I'm the I'm really the weed guy. He's the he's the he's the business end of the stick on that one. Ben Farley everybody I'm I'm super psyched. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm super psyched for a $6,000 PFD. How about you guys? <laughs> I can't wait to get that money and then get the fuck out of here. Am I right? It's a lot of money. Like, I don't know if it's actually $6,000 or what. There's numbers flying around. I don't care. You give me more than four grand, that's, get, that's, that's first and last month's rent in Denver and two months of living. You know what I mean? That's, that's I'm, I'm on to better things money. Our last governor, he was kind of smart about it. He cut it in half and just kind of sugar daddied the situation. Just like, hey babe, come back next year. You want another 1500 for free? It's barely a car payment. I drive, I drive a really nice car. $1,500. I do, I, I, I just rent an Aston Martin for a week and then I bum rides from my friends after that. That's exactly, that's exactly what I do. God damn. I'm about, I'm super fucking glad that uh, the sun's finally up past 3 p.m. I don't know about you guys, but that's like the definite sign of like people are starting to wake up in Alaska. I mean, over the winter, Alaska got so depressing that I joined Planet Fitness for their free sunbox. <laughs> Those guys, I don't know if they know they're getting ripped off, but that's a month of UV light for $25. The only reason I know how valuable that is is because I used to grow weed. I know what those lights cost. <laughs> that's expensive lighting. 10 minutes a day? Oh, I'll take that. They're just giving the vitamin D away, guys. Jeez. I'll take the D any way I can. This guy knows. Uh. <laughs> I 
recently broke up with my girlfriend, transition. I went down to Houston to go visit her guys. It was, a, it was a big deal, and then we broke up because it was terrible. And it was mostly because I get, a, I get afraid on the inside that uh, secretly, like, I just don't want to marry somebody and then find out later in life that they were homeless. Yeah. You're like, what? And like, but in my mind, it seems extremely plausible. Cause then you, it, I, cause I'd hate to see the signs later in life. Like, you know, you marry somebody and then you're like, wait a minute, why, why is it every time we walk by a garbage can, she's like, yeah, nothing, nothing good. Like every time we go out to eat, when she sits down, she's like, sugar packets. You know, the free toast jelly, she's putting that in her purse. And you're thinking this lady's economical. She's saving my bottom dollar. But she did move into my house awful quickly after the first date. Like, real quick. And I know what you guys are thinking, the whole putting the jam and jelly and sugar in your purse, it sounds an awful lot like your grandmother. And I know exactly what you also just thought. Has my grandmother been homeless this whole freaking time? I better put her in a home. No, don't do that. Oh no. Did you put your mother in a home? never do that. Mm -hmm. The only thing that gets me out of these kind of moods is weed. <laughs> hey! Yeah, anybody here? Um, I know that you can't say it out loud, but just give me a... Just give me a, hey, let's go later. That's like, it's kind of weird that it's legal now, man. I work in the legal weed industry. I also worked in the illegal weed industry for about six years before that. But much cooler. You seemed way more dangerous back in the day. You know what I mean? Like, when people got mad at you, it was because you didn't show up with the right amount of money, or you wore the wrong jacket, you didn't give the right hand signals. Nowadays, people get angry because you ask them if you want to join their rewards program. <laughs> hey man, you want to join my rewards program? And they're like, they're like, wow, so Jeff Sessions can know every... Hold on, I wrote this joke a, a month ago, and it's already on top of it. But... Wow, so Jeff Sessions... The... Wow, so the current attorney general who no longer happens to be Jeff Sessions can know everything I'm doing? And I'm like, no, dude, it gets you 15% off your weed next time you come in. Do you not like discounts, moron? Shit. I like sell. I like. I like. I like the weed business because you can wear a fanny pack just out front and people don't question it. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing it right now. So I'm sorry. No, I, I, I like the, the the reason I started doing this is because I forget everything all the time. Wonder why. But I found the solution. You just if you can remember where your dick is, you can remember where the rest of your drugs are. I, if I, dude, it's like, <laughs> yeah. It's the smart, it's the smartest move I've ever done. Plus, you you walk, uh, you walk into a club with your with your fanny pack full of shit, front and center. Nobody questions it. You walk in, you're good, man. You know what I mean? It's like you got nothing to hide. That's right up there. In fact, they gotta look down at your dick if they want to question it. You know what I mean? They gotta be like, hey, man, is there any? You're good. You're good. They're not doing a pat down, unless, uh, unless I ask. This guy, once again, this guy knows exactly what I'm talking about. Damn it. It's, uh, so, this comes a point in the time, I, I'm the guy that gets people going, okay? That's my job as a person, and I wanna get everybody raising their glasses tonight, because this is a very special occasion. All right, so on three, everybody, drink! Three. There we go. Wow, I just messed that one up hard, huh? Now the, now the bartender, though, knows everybody who didn't tip. Clearly. Now, you look like a good tipper, man. In fact, you, look, you guys actually look like good tippers. The one thing I gotta ask is that, uh, ladies, if you're gonna be tipping your bar staff generously, just don't do it with boob money. 
You know what money I'm talking about, this money. I got you. I got nothing wrong with boobs, okay? I got nothing wrong with boobs at all. I got wrong with something, I got a problem with sweat. And sweaty money and I have to touch people's weed after that, okay? I don't come into your business like, oh, $14.95? Hold on, wrong side. Uh, here, darling, that's a 20, and you keep the tip because it touched my tip. All right. You have a good night. I got a quick, uh, before I leave, I want to do a quick uh, little mansplain in here. Yeah. Very necessary nowadays, everybody knows it. Um, I only bring it up uh, because I just wanted to give a little PSA that guys don't compare dicks, ladies. We just don't do it. Only reason I know this is because uh, I've seen girls compare boobs like right in front of me, like boob, like like girl. Usually it's cocaine that starts it. But and then you shut up, right? You shut up. You sit there. Oh my god. And you want to say hers are bigger, but you can't say it, dude, because then you're caught and they stop. But I, but it was, uh, it was uh, apparent to me because there was this girl I slept with recently that had seen very minimal dicks. We're talking two to three dick maximum, right? You could tell because she asked me, is your dick like normal looking for most dicks? And it caught me off guard because I don't, guys don't compare dicks. The only dicks I really see are in like porn. And those are the best dicks. I don't know if you guys seen those dicks. That is the best mankind has. I mean, that is the cream of the cock right there. That is the tops for dicks. And that's finally, I mean, the only time I ever looked at dicks was maybe like in high school when I was playing hockey and you're in the locker room and you're like taking a shower and you're just like, what's that weird flappy little skin at the end? That's, that's funny. And then, and then at 16 years old, your parents finally tell you that you're circumcised and what circumcision is? I'll take it by the silence that and nobody here is circumcised to that. I'll take it by that. But I'll take back man's way by giving you guys a quick uh, story about how I've... Uh, I've done my best trying to actually go through things that women have to go through. This is the year of the women, guys. This is like, ladies, give yourselves a round of applause for making it. For real, like, this, I, I really like this decade um, of the next, I feel like the next decade's gonna be better. This decade was shit, but next decade. And so I decided to do something that I felt like, you know, I had to do something that women have to go through just to feel the pain of, some, you know, of being a woman, even a little bit, even the small, smallest bit. So when I'm in an uh, argument with my next girlfriend, I can be like, I know, a little. So I decided to do one thing I thought I could, which was fuck my way up the corporate ladder. Not a hard goal. Things aren't going well though, bud. I, uh, d I forgot I worked for the family business. <laughs> actually, it's going all right. It's actually going all right. Oh my goodness. So you guys ready for Pablo Francis? Are you guys excited? <laughs> well, you don't get him yet. You actually get a, a lady who's bringing up a bunch of funny comics up here to this very bar for the Alaska Before You Die Comedy Festival. She's been doing a heck of a lot in the scene here, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy her. And then you get Pablo Francisco, but, but I think you guys are really going to enjoy this next comic. Everybody, I want you to welcome to the stage, Miss Cass Smiley! But I don't go by that name anymore because I feel like it sets up a false expectation of what you're really gonna get from me. Right. Like Cassandra sounds like a possibly beautiful, nice lady who's gonna like feed you grapes dressed in like a silk robe or some shit. Cass, on the other hand. Yeah, exactly. Cass. Cass is gonna smoke the last of your weed on your couch wearing your fucking pajamas again. Don't get it twisted. Let's all know what we're in for. You know? 
Uh, it's very true. Like I said, I'm producing a national comedy festival. It's happening. It's going to be here in like a week. So don't leave.